Norman Borlaug changed the world. Through his work in plant breeding, he touched over a billion lives. So how will you make a difference? How will you leave your fingerprints on the world? Like Norman, you will find that knowledge, vision, passion, and determination are key. Norman Ernest Borlaug was born on March 25, 1914, in Cresco, Iowa. He was a light-hearted young boy, already curious about the ways of Mother Nature. In those days, boys often dropped out of school to work on the farm, but Norman's grandfather knew that education would provide the tools needed to make change happen and encourage Norman to make learning a priority. At 19, Norman saw real hunger for the first time. While visiting Minneapolis, Minnesota, grown men begged him for pocket change. Norman watched a riot break out when milk was dumped in the streets as a protest to low food prices. Hungry people scrambled past him, trying to take anything they could. Borlaug was affected profoundly by the scene. He was convinced extreme hunger had more than just the stomach in its clutches. It strongly influenced the mind. Borlaug continued his education in Minneapolis. He received a degree in forestry in 1937 and a doctorate in plant pathology in 1942. After graduating and working in the industry for two years, Borlaug moved to Mexico to help farmers improve their crops and increase their yields. When Borlaug arrived, he found unchecked disease destroying the wheat crop. The soil was exhausted and depleted of nutrients. Yields were low and farmers were having trouble feeding their families. Each starving person Borlaug encountered planted a seed of compassion in his soul. He wrote to his wife, saying, These places I've seen have clubbed my mind. They are so poor and depressing. I don't know what we can do to help these people, but we've got to do something. At that time, it was hard to imagine that Mexico would ever become self-sufficient in wheat production. Norman even wondered if he'd made a mistake taking on the challenge. But he didn't lose sight of his goals, and the team focused their energy on solving the problems at hand. The farmers in Mexico were skeptical about experimental crops. The last attempts to improve local crops had done more harm than good. When Borlaug came and tried to explain his vision in broken Spanish, they looked at him like he was crazy. Regardless, Borlaug decided to get to work with or without a tractor. Driven by a natural momentum, he strapped himself to a plow and started cutting furrows himself. Eventually, nearby farmers noticed and took pity, offering him a small tractor. Borlaug could not rest until he found a solution to the problem. Before the sun rose each morning, he was already out in the field searching for a way to overcome the stem rust epidemic that was destroying the crops. The stem rust fungus caused red scab-like blisters to form on the stem. These blisters crippled the plants, often killing them. Crops infected with the fungus had very poor yields. Through plant breeding, Borlaug's team needed to increase yields by changing the production system and introducing wheat varieties that would resist the diseases. Dr. Borlaug's task as a plant breeder was to find a line resistant to the disease, cross it with locally adapted susceptible varieties, and select the resistant lines. Borlaug and his team accomplished this after only three short years. By evaluating and selecting materials twice each year, they were able to accelerate the breeding process. The projected time to raise resistant plant varieties was cut in half. This strategy became known as shuttle breeding. Because breeding materials were grown under the summer sun of the central highlands and the winter sun of the Sonoran Desert, the lines they developed were insensitive to length of day. This made the wheat extremely adaptable to different growing regions. In addition to being disease-resistant, the new wheat varieties were highly responsive to fertilizer. With ample fertilizer, the new wheat varieties flourished. Their heads were promising, growing fat with extra grain. But with this success came an unexpected challenge. The new plants became top-heavy and the tall stalks collapsed under the weight of the grain, a problem called lodging. Harvesting was difficult and yields suffered greatly, but Borlaug's team refused to give up. Yet again, plant breeding provided a solution that could save the yields while retaining the benefits of a highly responsive crop. Breeders developed a trait called semi-dwarf. Semi-dwarf wheat grew with stronger, shorter stalks that could support the weight of the grain. To give you an idea of where semi-dwarf wheat came from, the first variety, called Norin 10, 
was developed in Japan shortly after World War II. Norin 10 was then introduced into U.S. breeding programs by Orville Vogel at Washington State University. Borlaug's group introduced the Norin 10 Brever 14, a high-yielding semi-dwarf line, into their Mexican breeding program in 1953. Following the same breeding approach, Borlaug's team solved the lodging problem by adapting the semi-dwarf line to Mexico. These semi-dwarf varieties became known as miracle seeds. They yielded more than other wheat varieties. Another jump in yields was incredible. Yields doubled first because of disease resistance and again because of dwarf wheat. What seemed impossible only 15 years earlier became a reality when in 1956 Mexico became self-sufficient in wheat production. In 1963, they had enough grain to export and help supply the rest of the world. This coordinated breeding effort affected more than just Mexico. Borlaug expanded his vision and program to India and Pakistan, drastically increasing their food production systems as well. Pakistan produced 5 million tons in 1965 and 8 million tons in 1970. India produced 12 million tons in 1965 and 20 million tons in 1970. The U.S. Agency for International Development labeled the dramatic improvements in food production the Green Revolution. Norman Borlaug refused to settle for anything less. He reflected that when wheat was ripening properly, with wind blowing across the field, you could hear the beards of the wheat rubbing together. It was like whispering music that once you heard, you could never forget. Borlaug's work was a symbol of the importance of agriculture in the global community. In 1970, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts. While handing Borlaug the prize, the committee chairman said, more than any other single person of his age, he has helped to provide bread for a hungry world. Norman Borlaug translated his vision directly into action. Through his knowledge and skill in plant breeding, he left the world a better place than he found it. What's your story? How will you apply your knowledge, vision, passion, and determination? We know you can make the difference. We're just waiting to see where you leave your fingerprints. Thank you.